Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Nitrogen Industries Ammonium Nitrate. We will have a kind of recapitulation of what we have discussed in uh, last uh, few lectures. We started with discussions on major contributions of chemical engineering to agricultural industry. So, then we realized that fertilizers and pesticides are the areas in which the contribution of chemical engineering is uh, very huge. Indeed, fertilizers and pesticides can be manufactured only by the chemical engineers. Not only that one, we also realized that several unit processes and unit operations associated with the food processing and preservation technologies are also handled by the chemical engineers. So, having uh, known this much of contribution, uh, important contribution of chemical industries or chemical engineering professional to uh, agriculture industry, we started our discussions on fertilizers. So, we started our discussion uh, with nitrogen fertilizers, but before going into the nitrogen fertilizers directly, we started discussions on importance of fertilizers, especially towards the growth of the plants and then uh, seed formations and then uh, uh, fruits and uh, fruits formation etc. all those kind of things those we have discussed. Then we have discussed what are the components of fertilizers and their sources. Then we uh, started uh, nitrogen industries or nitrogen fertilizer industries where we discussed manufacturing of ammonia, nitric acid and urea. Under the manufacturing of individual of uh, these three components what we have seen their respective raw materials their reactions, process and flow chart, major engineering problems and end uses etc. We have seen for each of these three components. So, today we are going to discuss another nitrogen fertilizer that is ammonium nitrate. Okay. We start with pertinent properties, molecular weight is 80.05, melting point is 170 degree centigrade, boiling point it decomposes if you heat it. 200 degree centigrade or beyond that one. Okay. Solubility, it is soluble in water, alcohol and ammonia as well. F for example, in water 90 grams of ammonium nitrate is soluble in 1 liter of water at 20 degree centigrade. Then coming to the grades, different grades are available. Technical grade is white hygroscopic crystals or granules. Fertilizer grade 93 to 95 percent uh, ammonium nitrate uh, fertilizers which contain 33 percent of uh, nitrogen. It is very explosive when mixed with combustible materials are exposed to high temperature. So, uh, actually not only as a fertilizer, this component is also used as a kind of explosive component as well. For explosions also it is used. So, one has to be very careful not only during the uh, manufacturing of ammonium nitrate, but also during the uh, storage as well as the utilization point of view as well. So, consumption pattern if you see heavy demand for uh, it in mixed fertilizers is there due to increased use of N as agricultural fertilizer. This is this actually we have been uh, seeing in last uh, 2 to 3 class uh, that you know uh, high nutrient and high nitrogen uh, fertilizers are the demand of agriculture industry. So, many manufacturer are preparing manufacturing nitrogen or uh, mixed chemical nitrogen fertilizers where N is in higher proportions, right. So, that is what we have seen. So, but uh, here in India especially this ammonium nitrate is not used directly as a fertilizer mostly, rather it is used as intermediate to prepare many other chemicals. Uh, in addition to the mixed fertilizers. Okay? Let us say ammonium sulphate, etc., those kind of uh, you know uh, nitrolime, etc., these kind of uh, mixed fertilizers if you wanted to produce then this ammonium nitrate is used much more in India. Though it can be directly used as a kind of a fertilizer, but however in Indian soil use of uh, ammonium nitrate directly it causes you know it is having uh, too high uh, leaching rate in Indian soils. That is the reason Indian soils we do not use ammonium nitrate directly as fertilizer rather we use it for the preparation of mixed chemical fertilizers like you know uh, phosphate, sulphate, etc. those kind of uh, fertilizers those we are going to discuss anyway. For that purpose it is majorly used because of such uh, reasons in addition to the increased use of N as agricultural fertilizer, the demand for ammonium nitrate is also increasing. 
It is also used uh, in small fraction as fertilizer in India, but very rarely, very, very less negligible. Okay? This is because nitrate uh, nitrogen is inferior to ammonium nitrogen, especially particularly in rice paddies, what you need? You do not need uh, you know, superior uh, nitrogen content through the nitrogen fer fertilizer. You need uh, uh, inferior content, smaller con contents are required. So, that, that is the reason nitrate nitrogens are in general used in rice paddies. It is also converted to uh, chemicals like nitrolime, which is also known as nitro chalk, right? Nitro chalk chemical name is nothing but calcium ammonium nitrate, and then it is also used for the production of ammonium sulfate nitrate. These are all nothing but uh, you know uh, mixed chemical fertilizers. If you see the end uses in India, more than 90 percent is used as fertilizer, but in mixed chemical fertilizer production, not directly as a fertilizer. Ammonium nitrate directly itself is not used uh, as a fertilizer in chemical industries. Very small uh, amount is only, very small fraction is only used. But majority of it, more than 90 percent of uh, ammonium nitrate produced in India is used for uh, mixed chemical fertilizer production. Okay? Something like ammonium sulfate nitrate, calcium ammonium nitrate, etc. But however, if you see uh, in USA, 80 percent is used as a fertilizer, 12 percent it is used as explosives, something like you know uh, for mining purpose sometimes you need to do some explosions. So, it is also used as explosives and then up to 12 percent it is used as explosives in uh, United States of America. Miscellaneous chemicals production remaining 3 percent is used. Okay? In fact, until uh, World War II, it was mainly used as explosive only. Even today, also whatever explosives are available, out of which 75, out of which 75 percent of that one is coming from this ammonium nitrate only. Right? However, these days it is primarily used as a fertilizer because of a demand for high nitrogen content. Ammonium nitrate in general, it is having 33, 33.5 percent nitrogen, right? You know, NPK fertilizers, we understand that how much total N percent is there, what is the available P2O5 and then what is the uh, available K2O, etc. These are the things we see. So, how much N is there in a fertilizer that is, you know, important, that is the important factor, okay? Not only that one, though it is not used as a kind of a uh, uh, direct fertilizers uh, in, in, uh, in India, sometimes you need to make a balance. Urea is a better option for uh, uh, nitrogen fertilizers in general as we have discussed in previous lecture. However, 100 percent urea you cannot use, sometimes you need to make a balance. So, the remaining balance uh, of nitrogen fertilizers whatever are there may be fulfilled by the other fertilizers, uh, other nitrogen fertilizers and one of them is ammonium nitrate. Now, production of ammonium nitrate, production of ammonium nitrate is done by one simple uh, method by reacting ammonia and then nitric acid. When you react the ammonia and nitric acid, then you will get ammonium nitrates and then almost all plants are based on this uh, reaction only, right? So, obviously from one plant to the other plant there may be some differences. Those differences are primarily coming if you produce this ammonium nitrate in solid form, right? If you wanted to produce as a pellet, so the after the reaction whatever the steps are there, so how are you doing? That is one uh, option. And then if you wanted to have a crystals, so then how are you doing that process? How are you implementing in the plant? Flakes, if you wanted to have ammonium nitrate flakes, even the reaction itself is different. For example, if you wanted to produce uh, pellets, uh, uh, crystals, etc., then liquid phase reaction is required. If you wanted to uh, produce ammonium nitrate flakes, then the reaction has to be gaseous or vapor phase reaction has to be taken place. So then, so then for this case, uh, you know, first from the first point itself is the different route, though the reaction is same. For these two uh, forms, let us say pellets and crystals, the reaction starting point is same, but after forming that ammonium nitrate uh, solution, 75 percent usually you get after the reaction. That from that point, how are you processing? That may be differing from one plant to the other plant. So, this is this is the only uh, possible uh, variation from one plant to the other plant producing this ammonium nitrate. Basic chemical reaction is uh, reaction between ammonia and nitric acid 
giving rise to ammonium nitrate which is exothermic reaction because the uh, enthalpy of the reactants is higher than the enthalpy of the products. Now we see raw materials, basically uh, from the reaction we can understand these two raw materials are required, one is the nitric acid. So, 57 to 60 percent pure nitric acid is sufficient. Actually, if you remember a couple of lectures back, uh, we have uh, discussed how to produce uh, nitric acid in which we have seen from the oxidation absorption tower of the plant, you get up to 60 percent of HNO3. If you need higher uh, purity of HNO3, then there are purification steps, those things we have discussed. But for ammonium nitrate production, whatever 57 to 60 or up to 60 percent HNO3 that you get from the oxidation absorption tower of a nitric acid plant is there that itself is sufficient, okay? you do not need to have higher purity nitric acid. Ammonia has to be in liquid form and then we have already seen uh, discussed in the previous slide that it is very explosive. So, then there should be a kind of a, a material that can be coated to avoid the possible explosions. So, clays are in general used for coating on end products to avoid explosions. So, this is the third raw material that is required for the plant. Okay. Quantitative requirements if you see, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of ammonium nitrate 98 percent yield, then ammonia you required 0.22 tons, 60 percent HNO3 you required 1.38 tons. Plant capacities vary in general 100 to 500 tons per day. Okay? Now, we see the process description of ammonium nitrate production. Right? We have seen that uh, ammonium nitrate production is based on the reaction between ammonia and then nitric acid. Right? We have also seen uh, few modifications are possible especially with respect to the product form if you wanted to collect the product in a solid form. Okay? So, what are they? like prilling process, if you wanted to get spherical uh, pellets then uh, prilling process you have to follow, if you wanted to have uh, uh, crystals then crystallization process you have to follow and then if you wanted to have a flakes kind of uh, product then you have to follow stengel process and then modification to produce nitrolime. If you wanted to produce nitrolime then you have to follow the nitrolime process, these are the uh, modifications possible. So, now we see all of them. Uh, through a flow chart as well as the process description we are going to discuss now. So, this is the flow chart, what, he, what we can see here it is having three processes. Right? So, this path whatever is there uh, from ammonia and then uh, nitric acid then to producing these prills or spherical crystals of uh, ammonium nitrate, this is nothing but the prilling process. And then if you uh, follow from this reaction after this point, let us say if you take uh, this section, then this is a, a nitrolime production uh, process, this is a prilling uh, process. And then if you take the vapor phase reaction between nitron between ammonium vapors and then HNO3 vapors if you do the reaction vapor phase reaction and then follow this step uh, this uh, process then this is nothing but stengel process. Crystallization process is having from this uh, from here itself uh, it is a simple uh, step is there for the crystallization process that is not shown in the flow chart. So, all these four processes or all these four modifications that are possible in ammonium nitride uh, production process we are going to see one by one now. Okay? So, let us start discussing about the prilling process. So, what we have aqueous phase of HNO3 and then vapor phase of uh, NH3. This you take to a liquid phase reactor. right? in which reaction is taking place at around 140 degree centigrade. So, you will get approximately 75 percent ammonium nitrate. 
right. So, when this reaction takes place because of the heat of the reaction water boils off and then it is taken to the H2O to waste because we have seen the reaction between ammonia and then nitric acid is a exothermic reaction and then because of that the heat of the reaction uh, during the reaction whatever the water uh, formation is there that has been taken out, boils off. Okay? So, 75 percent uh, uh, pure ammonium nitrate whatever is there that is next taken to the uh, vacuum evaporator which is operating at uh, approximately 130 degree centigrade so that you can improve the purity to 95 percent. Right? So, this uh, 95 percent pure NH4 NO3 is then taken to a prilling tower where this uh, 95 percent molten ammonium nitrate is sprayed from the uh, top as droplets whereas the uh, conditioned air is allowed to pass uh, from the bottom to the top of the prilling tower. So, what happens? This uh, ammonium nitrate solution and then air interact each other in a counter current direction so that you know you can get the prills or uh, spherical pellets from here and then the those uh, spherical pellets whatever are there then you pass it through a screen sec a screening section so that you have the pellets approximately 1.5 mm size that is what the desired size in general for the applications. Of course, 2 to 4 mm also requires some purposes and then those things we see. So, whatever the uh, spherical pellets formed in the prilling tower, they are taken to the uh, classifying section. So, whatever the fines are there, these fines are sent back to the liquid phase reactor again. Right? Whatever the uh, product of desired size, let us say 1.5 mm size uh, spherical pellets passed through steam heated conveyor dryer so that you can get dry spherical pellets and those pellets are sent to coating drum where clay 2 to 4 percent of uh, clay is sprayed here, allowed here so that you know ammonium nitrate prills or spherical, or spherical pellets you can get. Now, these are coated with uh, clay so obviously it will be less explosive. Clays are required to be coated on this uh, pellets or whatever the flakes you get in order to avoid the explosions. So, this is the prilling process. Okay? Crystallization process also we can discuss here itself in the same flow sheet. So, uh, in the crystallization process, the process is same up to uh, whatever uh, vacuum evaporator section is there. So, from here you may get uh, 80 to 85 percent, 95 percent or something like that. So, let us say you are getting something like 85 percent uh, uh, you know ammonium uh, nitrate right so then you can take it to the vacuum crystallizer to increase the uh, slurry with 40 percent crystals right these will be then further centrifuged so that to decrease the moisture content to uh, less than 1 percent then these after centrifuging, uh, centrifuging what you do? You do the dusting with uh, 2 to 4 percent uh, clay to get uh, non hygroscopic ammonium nitrate crystals. This is the crystallization process. Right? Uh, while doing the uh, centrifugation whatever the liquor is there that is recycled to either vacuum evaporator section or to vacuum crystallizer section for the makeup purpose. Okay? This is about prilling process as well as a crystallization process two process uh, we have discussed here. So, description wise we are going to see once again here that is uh, under prilling process what we have? We have aqueous HNO3 and then ammonia vapors reacting in a, in a stainless steel agitated reactor. 
because of the reaction heat water boils off and final ammonium nitrate salt solution is obtained which is 75 percent pure and then it is at 140 degree centigrade. This hot salt solution is pumped to a vacuum evaporator to concentrate further to 95 percent ammonium nitrate and then this 95 percent ammonium nitrate this hot liquor is sprayed counter currently to conditioned air flow for solidification purpose in a uh, prilling tower. These prilling towers are usually uh, very uh, tall 60 to 75 meters. Okay? Prills are spherical pellets obtained by solidification have about 1.5 mm diameter. These prills must be screened and dried before coating with clay to avoid explosions. Oversized fines are redissolved and recycled through a neutralizing reactor. However, prilling towers are large, so obviously they will be costly. Thus, for their uh, replacement, centrifugal oil quenching processes for prill production has also been developed. So, but the danger is that when you do the centrifugal uh, oil quenching process, no oil should be going in to be uh, in contact with the ammonium nitrate, otherwise explosions may take place. Okay? Now, the crystallization process up to the point of spraying hot concentrated liquor from top of prilling towers as discussed in the previous prilling process is same in this process as well. Therefore, it is not shown in flowchart. Liquor from a vacuum evaporator contains 80 to 85 percent solids and it is then fed to a vacuum crystallizer. In this vacuum crystallizer, crystal growth can be controlled at about 40 degree centigrade to yield large grain required for fertilizer use. If you wanted to have the grain size 2 to 4 mm larger ones compared to the 1.5 mm spherical pellets in, pre, uh, in, uh, in uh, prilling process that you got, uh, then you have to go for the crystallization process if you need uh, bigger grains, okay, larger grains. Then the crystal slurry with about 40 percent crystals by weight is centrifuged. Mother liquor is returned to the evaporator and crystals are dried in a through conveyor or a rotary dryer at about 15 degree centigrade. Dusting with clay 2 to 4 percent clay is used where explosion hazards in bulk storage are prevalent and free flowing non-hygroscopic material is specified. So, uh, clay is not only for uh, uh, you know avoiding the explosion, but also it provides non-hygroscopic nature to the uh, crystals. Next is tangel process. So, in this process what happens? You have to concentrate this part of the flow sheet. Right? Here whatever uh, aqueous uh, HNO3 60 percent is there that is preheated in a uh, preheater number 1 which is at uh, 95 degree centigrade something right, approximately 90, 90 to 95 degree centigrade. Then it is again preheated in a uh, second preheater at about uh, 160 degree centigrade. This preheating is required because of the corrosion issues with HNO3, right? Because this reaction uh, is vapor phase. Because this reaction is occurring in vapor phase, for that reason also this preheating and vaporization of uh, HNO3 is required. Not only the corrosion reasons. Okay? Whatever the ammonia is there that is passed through a heat exchanger uh, uh, to vaporize by applying the temperature of 140 to 150 degree centigrade. So, now you have ammonia vapors and then HNO3 vapors. These vapors are taken into a vapor phase reactor to react. So, then reaction takes place at around 230 degree centigrade. Then you will get a molten ammonium nitrate plus water and these are usually at 200 degree centigrade pro on this product. So, then what you do? This uh, mixture of molten ammonium nitrate and water is taken to a cyclone separator. To this cyclone separator conditioned air is provided so that to remove the steam from the molten ammonium nitrate so that you can get the you know almost uh, dry uh, ammonium nitrate. Right? This conditioned air is applied so that 
Steam can be removed either by partial condenser or total condenser as H2O and then whatever the almost dried or solidified uh, ammonium nitrate is there that is collected from the bottom of the separator and then sent to a water cold belt where drying is further where further drying is done so that to reduce the water content to less than 1 percent less than 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 percent in the indeed. And then this uh, uh, dry ammonium nitrate whatever is there here that is taken to a classifier section where you have a breaker, grinder and then screener. This entire this uh, section combined is known as a classifier section. So, here uh, you required a specified sizes of uh, flakes. So, then you know, you know, uh, you have to do this uh, classification section. So, whatever the dried ammonium nitrate is there that is uh, broken and then grinded and then sent to the screen, uh, whatever the material of desired sizes are there, they are sent to the coating drum where coated, uh, co where coating with clay uh, is to be done so that you can get ammonium nitrate flakes coated with clay to avoid explosions, right. In this process of uh, breaking and grinding the dry ammonium nitrate, if at all you find some uh, fines, they can be recycled, okay. They can, they can be recycled to the ammonium nitrate uh, preheating section, okay. So, here from this uh, when you are removing uh, steam, uh, using the conditioned air. So, it is possible that some amount of unreacted HNO3 along with the NH4NO3 may also be going out that can be recycled back, okay. This is nothing but stain gel process where you are getting NH4NO3 flakes. Now, the description of the same process we see. First preheating of 60 percent nitric acid is done to 95 degrees centigrade in a stainless steel unit. Subsequent second preheating to 160 degrees centigrade is done in a tantalum unit. These are the materials of constructions. This is required if you have uh, you know um, uh, high corrosion issues. So, then you have to use this material otherwise this is sufficient. So, at higher temperature corrosion because of uh, hot HNO3 is going to be severe. So, then you have to use uh, uh, tantalum unit and then uh, which is expensive compared to the stainless steel. This preheating is essential to avoid corrosion due to high temperature nitric acid. Then ammonia vapor is preheated to 140 to 150 degree centigrade in a single stage heat exchanger. Vapor phase reaction between ammonia and nitric acid vapors is carried out in a packed bed in a packed stainless steel reactor to produce ammonium nitrate. Then molten ammonium nitrate and water vapor at 200 degree centigrade are passed through a tangential entry of cyclone separator where air helps in removal of steam from the molten salt. This salt which is nothing but ammonium nitrate is uh, removed at the bottom and solidified in a water cold stainless steel belt conveyor on a water cold stainless steel belt. Finally, solids are crushed and ground to flake size of uh, required size and screened as per the requirement. Oversize is reground to get the required size. Whatever the fines are there, they are dissolved, returned to HNO3 preheater stream. Product flakes are coated with clay and backed or bulk shipped as per the requirement. Now, modification to produce nitrolime. So, the same thing we can see here in this flow sheet as well. So, in this process you have to concentrate on this part of the flow sheet. So, aqueous uh, nitric acid and then uh, ammonia vapors reacting in a uh, liquid phase reactor at 145 degree centigrade and then because of the heat of the reaction water boils off and then you get 75 percent of ammonium nitrate NH4NO3. This is taken to a uh, vacuum evaporator which is operating at approximately 130 degree centigrade. From here you can get 80 to 85 percent uh, ammonium nitrate that is taken to plug mill which is nothing but 
screw mixer which is having two blades which are operating in a opposite direction to each other. To this mill pulverized lime is also supplied. So, here whatever the ammonium nitrate and pulverized lime are mixed together to get the pulverized product that is sent to a rotary drum granulator to get the granules. Those granules are dried using the flue gas to reduce the water content or moisture content less than 0.5 to 0.6 percent. So, this almost uh, dry granules whatever are there they are sent to a classifying section which is having a crushing roll and then screen as well. So, these granules are crushed by crushing rolls and then passed through a screens where you require to collect the product as 2 to 4 mm granules. So, that that is the required size right. So, these 2 to 4 mm granules are sent to the coating drum where limestone dust is also sprayed and then nitro lime you get it. Whatever the products or whatever the uh, material which is having the size less than 2 mm that is taken back as a recycle to plug mill this, method, this way for rebuilding the size. Okay? Whatever the undersized materials are there they are sent back to the crusher so that further crushing takes place and then size would be reduced to 2 to 4 mm again. Okay? So, this is the uh, nitro lime process or modification to produce nitro lime. Okay? Now, if you see the description of this process you have uh, 95 percent melt produced for uh, prilling in prilling process can be utilized for the production of nitro lime as well. This melt flows from a storage tank to a pug mill. This mill is a screw mixer consisting of uh, two sets of mixing blades rotating in opposite directions. Pulverized lime having 325 mesh size is admixed here with some heat of reaction evolved. Pulverized product flows to a rotary drum granulator then to a co-current direct heated flue gas dryer where product moisture is reduced to 0.5 to 0.6 percent of water. Screen classifiers separate 2 to 4 mm particles which moves on to a coating drum where fine limestone dust is added to yield a free flowing product. Oversized materials having more than uh, 4 mm size are recycled to the crusher for the further size reduction whereas the undersize having less than 2 mm are returned to the plug mill for size build up. Okay? So, all 4 alternative uh, options that are possible in ammonium nitrate uh, plant we have discussed here. right? Now, we see major engineering problems associated with the ammonium nitrate uh, production plants. First one is the corrosion. So, carbon steel can only be used in ammonia storage and feed system because of the corrosion issues. And then up to 120 degree centigrade type 304 extra low carbon ELC stainless steel is used for aqueous or 100 percent uh, nitric acid. This material of construction whatever ELC is there that is used throughout for most of the remainder of the ammonium nitrate plant to avoid the corrosion. These are the precautions one, st one should uh, take. But however, in stangel process where it is necessary to preheat HNO3 to 170 degree centigrade, expensive tantalum metal is needed for heat exchangers. Next is the crystallization or engineering problem associated with the crystallization. This problem occurs in vacuum crystallization process which is oldest of four processes that we have described. So, Oslo crystal classifier is used since it provides adequate growth of seed crystals to proper size, shape and strength in a continuous manner. That is the reason it is used. It is a commercial classifier actually. Prior to this equipment paddle type grainer was used but only small crystals suitable for munitions specifications could be produced. Okay? These are the issues uh, associated with the crystallization process. Next is the safety. As we have already discussed uh, ammonium nitrate is highly explosive so then uh, 
not only during the production, during the storage as well as the transportation stages also one should be careful because of explosive nature of uh, this ammonium nitrate. It is extremely reactive, so extreme reactivity of ammonium nitrate with combustible materials. So, it is sensitive to explosive decomposition, thus it requires safety precautions different from most in other organic processes. In addition to other safety precautions, air used in drying must be free of oil and other combustibles. This is what I already mentioned. If uh, you know for drying different options are there, let us say uh, for example, centrifugation with the oil that you are doing. So, in that one oil should not be coming into the contact with the ammonium nitrate otherwise explosions may take place. In stengel process, the equipment is designed for short residence times and low hold up thus it has the greatest inherent safety in its design where you get the flakes. Conditioned air requirement is uh, very much essential. Humidity and temperature requirements of air in the materials handling area not only during the production but also material handling area are very critical because ammonium nitrate and nitro lime are hygroscopic. Okay? So, because of the uh, required air conditioning you know uh, at Rurkela plant 1200 ton refrigeration unit is uh, installed. Coming to the economics, in India as I already mentioned ammonium nitrate has no application as fertilizer directly because its uh, leaching rate on soil is very much higher. So, that is the reason it is used for a you know mixed chemical production or as a kind of intermediate to produce other chemicals. And thus it is mainly used as an intermediate in manufacture of uh, nitro lime and ammonium sulphate nitrate which are mixed chemical fertilizers. Mixed chemical fertilizers in the sense they are not individual N. There is uh, you know sulphate also there and then uh, calcium is also there. So, because of them uh, these fertilizers are known as the mixed chemical fertilizers. We are going to uh, discuss the production of uh, uh, mixed uh, uh, chemical fertilizers as well in the next week of the course. Only captive production in an ammonia nitric acid plant complex is competitive. This process is competitive that is the reason we people are following because you have several options of the uh, material production different solid forms and then those materials produce materials can be used as intermediate for the production of several intermediate uh, or uh, chemical mixed chemical fertilizers. It is especially desirable if a balanced plant production sales for urea and mixed fertilizers can be achieved. As I mentioned though urea is a very good uh, option uh, as long as uh, nitrogen fertilizers requirement but however 100 percent you cannot have. So, then if you wanted to maintain uh, balanced uh, plant production sale for urea and then mixed fertilizers you have to produce ammonium nitrate also in order to make the balance. Otherwise ammonium off gases from once through urea plant can be used to make ammonium nitrate or nitro lime. This we have already discussed in previous class where we were discussing about urea. So, whatever uh, urea production plant we have seen the conversion is only 42 45 percent in single pass through. So, then unreacted ammonia and then CO2 of gases whatever are there you have to efficiently recycle so that uh, conversion increases or you have to use them for some other purpose so that economically the plant is feasible or profitable. Okay? So, one option is that this off gas uh, ammonia CO2 of gas may be used for uh, you know uh, ammonium nitrate and nitro lime production after removing the CO2 from the off gases. Stengel process is considered the cheapest process for new investment money and it is also safest from a hazard standpoint. Okay? This we have already discussed. The references for this lecture references are provided here, but however the entire lecture is prepared from this book that is outlines of uh, chemical technology by C. L. Dryden edited by Gopal Rao and Marshall third edition thank you